all together. It's time for Mass with Mr. Thomas. That was awesome. Here we go, chapter four, lesson number eight. Looking at second order differential equations, still unhomogeneous, but we are now looking to find the particular solution. Remember, the particular solution is when you have additional information, so you're not just looking for your general solution, you have enough information to find out the value of your constants. Examples one to three are in the previous lesson. We're starting with example four. Find the particular solution of the second order differential equation, d2y by dx squared minus 4 dy by dx plus 3y equals zero, but the additional information we have is that when x equals zero, y is one, and dy by dx equals five. So starting this off the same way, the first thing we need is the perfect, the auxiliary equation. Take the coefficients of d2y by dx squared, the coefficient of dy by dx, and the coefficient of y. We will have one, negative four, and three. And our auxiliary equation then will be one k squared, take away four k, and plus three equals zero. We then have to solve that, and we solve that by factorizing. That gives us k take away three, bracket k take away one, meaning the values of k would be one and three. This means the roots are perfect. They are real and distinct. And if the roots are real and distinct, look back to what we were looking at in the previous lesson, just here, woo! And we can see that if we have these two values, real and distinct roots, we would have y equals ae to the px plus be to the qx. So here, we're gonna have y equals ae to the 3x plus be to the 1x. If you get the one and the three the other way around, it makes no difference. So that is the general solution, but we have been told this additional information when x is zero, y is one, and dy by dx equals five. That means we can find out the values of a and b. So the first thing we're told is that when x is zero, y is one, so let's look at that. Well, if you take this general solution, replace x with zero and y with one, then we will have one equals ae to the power of three times zero, which is zero, plus be to the power of zero. e to the power of zero is just gonna be one, anything to the power of zero is one, meaning we will have one equals a plus b, or a plus b equals one. Can't do anything else with that. So let's look at what else we're told. When x is zero, we know dy by dx equals five. To get dy by dx, we have to differentiate. Let's do it. So differentiating, y would go to dy by dx, and ae to the three x will keep e to the three x as it is, but then multiply by the derivative. So we'd have three ae to the three x. And with be to the x, well, b is gonna stay as it is, and e to the power of x will again stay as it is. Multiply by the derivative, well, that would just be one, so it just stays like that. Now we can replace dy by dx with five and x with zero. If we do that then, we will have five equals three times a times e to the power of three times zero, which is zero, plus be to the power of zero. That will therefore give us, well, anything to the power of zero is just one, so we'll be left with three a plus b, and we know that's equal to five. So we have these two equations. What do you think we do next? Perfect. It is simultaneous equations. So we've got 3a plus b is 5, a plus b is 1. If you subtract the equations, 3a take away a is 2a, the b's will be eliminated, and we'll be left with 4. Therefore, a is going to be 2. Once we know a is 2, we can substitute that into one of our equations. So let's sub it in here. So a plus b is 1. If a is 2, 2 add b is 1. Well, b therefore has to be a negative 1. Particular solution then, all we're doing is we're rewriting the general solution, but we're replacing a and b with what we found them to be. So instead of a e to the 3x, a is 2, so we'll have 2 e to the power of 3x. And instead of plus b e to the power of x, b is negative 1, so we'll have take away 1 e to the power of x. And that there is your particular solution. Example five, find the particular solution of the second order differential equation. D2y by dx squared plus four dy by dx plus four y equals zero, given that when x is zero, y is one, and dy by dx equals two. So, Danielle, the first thing we need is the auxiliary equation. 
perfect. So your auxiliary equation, take the coefficients of d2y by dx squared, dy by dx and y, would have 1, 4 and 4. Therefore, the equation is 1k squared plus 4k plus 4 equals 0. To solve that, we would factorise. Callum, help us out. Perfect, you would end up with k plus 2 times k plus 2. Good. Uh, therefore, well, k would equal negative 2. k would equal negative 2. Really, it's the same number. k equals negative 2, and that is a repeated root. Therefore, the roots are, well, negative 2. It's a real number, and it's equal roots. So the roots are real and equal. Remember, again, back to what we were doing in the last lesson. If the roots are real and equal, and k just equals that one number, then your general solution is going to be y equals, in brackets, ax plus b, e to the power of that number, times x. So here, because k is negative 2, we'd have, in brackets, ax plus b, times e to the power of, perfect, negative 2x. And that there is your general solution. Once again, we have been given this additional information and that lets us find out the values of A and B. So let's go over the page and use that. So that's our general solution, AX plus B e to the power of negative 2X. We are told, first of all, X is 0 and Y is 1. So if X is 0 and Y is 1, we will have, well, we can replace the Y with 1. So we'd have 1 equals... AX plus B, well, if X is 0, it's A times 0, which disappears, leaving us just with a B in brackets. And that's E to the power of negative 2 times 0 is just a 0. So we'd have B times E to the power of 0. Meaning then, E to the power of 0 is just going to be 1, so B is 1. And that's the answer. From there, well, we are also told that when X is 0, DY by DX equals 2, which means we have to differentiate. And we are given the general solution, so we're differentiating that. So to differentiate it, what would we have to use, Tara? Perfect, good, we're using the product rule. How do you know we're using the product rule? Perfect, because you've got one function in terms of x times another function in terms of x. Tara's perfectly right. It is the product rule, so u dash v plus u v dash. u, let that equal ax plus b. If we differentiate that with respect to x, well, ax will just become a, and b is just going to be a number that will disappear, so u dash is a. v is going to be what we're multiplying that by, so we're multiplying it by e to the power of negative 2x. Differentiating that, well, it will stay as e to the power of negative 2x, but you have to multiply by the derivative of the index. Differentiate negative 2x, you get negative 2. So v dash will be negative 2 e to the power of negative 2x. dy by dx, therefore, will be u dash times v, so a times e to the power of negative 2x, plus u times v dash, so ax plus b times negative 2 e to the power of negative 2x. Let's tidy that up slightly. So we've got the negative, just bringing that to the front, with the e to the power of negative 2x, just for the side, and I've still got the ax plus b. So we have differentiated, but we know that when x is 0, dy by dx equals 2. So let's replace x with 0 and dy by dx with 2. That will give us, well, we'd have 2 equals a times e to the power of negative 2 times 0. It's just going to be 0. So again, it's e to the power of 0. Take away 2 times. Again, it's e to the power of 0. And if x was 0, you'd have 0a, and you're just left with b in the brackets. e to the power of 0 is just 1, so it's a times 1, which is a. You'd have negative 2 times 1 times b, which is negative 2b. From there, you've got a take away 2b is equal to 2. We know b is equal to 1, so we can replace b with 1. So a take away 2 is equal to 2, meaning then that a is equal to 4. We now know the values of a and b. a is 4, b is 1, so we go back to the general solution, but we rewrite it, and we can swap a with 4 and b with 1, and that will give us the particular solution. Yeah! Example 6, find the particular solution of the second order differential equation, d2y by dx squared, take away 4 dy by dx plus 5y equals 0. Again, we're given this information, when x is 0, y is 2, and dy by dx equals 1. First of all, we find the auxiliary equations, so the coefficients of d2y by dx squared, dy by dx, and y. We've got 1, negative 4, and 5, so our auxiliary equation will be 1k squared take away 4k plus 5 
equals zero. We're just using the coefficients here. From there, we will solve that by factorizing. And if we factorize precious, what do we get? Uh -uh. We can't factorize. You are perfectly right. And if we cannot factorize, we have to use the bum, 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 quadratic formula. So using the quadratic formula, take the coefficients of k squared k and this number just here. They will be the values of a, b, and c. There is your quadratic formula. We're finding the value of k here. So k equals negative b plus or minus the square root to b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Subbing in those values, well, you'd have negative negative 4, which is 4, plus or minus the square root of negative 4 squared, take away 4 times a times c is 1 times 5, over 2 times 1. Working that out, that gives us 4 plus or minus the square root of negative 4 over 2. Just remember, when you've got this, you get the square root of a negative. Up until now, you haven't been able to take that further. But if you look at the chapter and complex numbers, you'll see that the square root of negative 4, you can write as the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 4. The square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of negative 1 we call i. So that becomes 2i. I. So you'd have 4 plus or minus 2i over 2, divide both the real and the imaginary part by 2, and it gives us 2 plus or minus i. Therefore, the roots are complex conjugates. And the general solution, once again, remember back to the previous lesson, if you end up with complex conjugates, some number plus or minus something i, well, you're going to have e to the real part times x times a sine imaginary part times x plus b cos imaginary part times x. So here, in this case, p is going to be 2, and q, well, it's 1i, so it's going to be 1. So we'd have e to the power of 2x times a sine 1x plus b cos 1x. And that is the general solution. However, we are told that when x is 0, y is 2, and dy by dx equals 1. So we know we can find out the values of a and b. So the first thing we are told, when x is 0, y is 2. So when x is 0, y equals 2. Therefore, we can replace x with 0 and y with 2. So our general solution, y is 2. So we'd have 2 equals e to the power of 0 times a sine 0 plus b cos 0. Therefore, e to the power of 0 is 1. So you'd have 2 equals. And then that would just give you b because sine of 0 is going to be 0. So a times 0, that's going to wipe out. Cos of 0 is 1, so we're really just left in the brackets with b. And it'll be b times 1, so in other words, b is 2. We're also told that when x is 0, dy by dx equals 1, meaning we will have to differentiate. So we are going to be differentiating our general solution. To differentiate that, what would we have to use? Patrick, perfect. We would have to use the product rule. And we use the product rule because we have e to the power of 2x, so it's a function in terms of x times another function in terms of x. So u is going to be e to the power of 2x. Differentiate that. Well, it would stay as e to the power of 2x, but remember to multiply by the derivative of the index. So you'll end up with 2e to the power of 2x. v is going to be that bit in the brackets, a sine x plus b cos x. And if we differentiate that, well, sine will go to cos, so we'll have a cos x. And if you differentiate cos, you get negative sine, so we'll have take away b sine x. dy by dx then, u dash v plus u v dash dy by dx will equal this. You'd have u dash 2e to the power of 2x times a sine x plus b cos x plus u e to the power of 2x times v dash. From there, you know that x is 0, dy by dx equals 1. Therefore, we're replacing dy by dx with 1. And we'd have 1 equals and replace every single x here with 0. So you'd have 2e to the power of 2 times 0, which is going to be 0. a sine 0 plus b cos 0 plus 2 plus e to the power of 2 times 0. It's just e to the power of 0 times a cos 0 take away b sine 0. From there, if you work that out, well, sine of 0 is just 0. So a times 0 is just going to disappear. Cos of 0 is 1. So here you'll be left with b. That'll be b times 2. So it's just 2b or not 2b. And cos of 0 again is 1. So it's 1 times a. Sine of 0 is 0. So the b is going to disappear. So we just have a times. That'll become 1. So it's just a. So we get down to something that's fairly simple. We still need to find out a and b, but we know b is 2, so we can sub that in here. If we do that, we will end up with 1 equals 2 times 2 plus a, meaning then that a is negative 3. 
A particular solution then? Well, we're going back to the general solution, but we're replacing the a with negative 3 and the b with 2. So we'd have e to the power of 2x times negative 3 sine x plus 2 cos x. That will then give us, if you rewrite it, which you don't have to, we're just putting the negative later on and the positive value first. So we'd have e to the power of 2x times 2 cos x minus 3 sine x. And that there is your particular solution. Try some of these questions. You're still looking at second order differential equations, still in homogeneous, and it's the particular solution. They are in the unit one booklet. It's page 98. Check your answers in the next page. See how you get on. Best of luck. Have fun. Bye. Woo!